So you may or may not know, my great-grandfather, Eugene Meyer, bought the Washington Post at a bankruptcy sale in 1933 for $825,000. And that was his own personal money. Much like Jeff Bezos, he had been a very successful businessman. And that was $2 million less than he had offered for it two years before. My grandmother wrote in her book that in 1947, he was as happy as a little boy because for the first time, the Washington Post was only going to lose $2 million. Remember, that's 1947 money, and that's his own personal money. So he invested in the Post from 1933. The first year it was finally profitable was 1955. So people forget that print was really only a very successful, profitable business for a pretty narrow window of time, sort of 40 to 50 years. Um, unfortunately, I missed that, that time. Uh, yep, good timing, Catherine. So producing original journalism is expensive. And just to give you an example, so we have a newsroom of, we spend roughly $100 million a year on our newsroom. So I became publisher after having been in the business for roughly 12 years in 2008. Again, brilliant timing on my part. I knew our business was already in trouble. And then, of course, the economy fell off a cliff. I promised my uncle Don Graham and the board and the shareholders that I would get us back to profitability in three years. We did it in one. We did it by aggressively cutting costs while at the same time, I mean, it really is the innovator's dilemma, aggressively cut costs in the legacy business while trying to reinvent yourself for the digital age. So a much smaller cost structure, cutting down the legacy costs, but at the same time trying to build up a digital business and a digitally sustainable business. Um, we still have a lot to do, but I'm very proud of what we've done while continuing to produce some of the best journalism in the world. But we knew we needed to do more. So after 80 years of being owned by my family, we arrived at the tough decision last year of selling the newspaper. I went to my uncle in the fall, and I said, you know, what the world I see ahead is unending cost cuts, and at some point, if we keep doing that, it's not gonna be the Washington Post we all know and love. And if, if that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. But I think the better path for the Washington Post would be to, do, to find an owner not dissimilar from my great-grandfather, with deep pockets, who could bring something to the table, who cares about what we do, and who would take care of it. Um, it was a wrenching decision for my family, but we decided to do that, and we decided not just to sell to any owner. We were not gonna sell to private equity. No offense for any of you in here who are in private equity. Um, but we didn't want somebody who would come in and try to flip it, like it's happened to a lot of other newspapers. So we were lucky enough to find Jeff Bezos, who had a relationship with my uncle. When Jeff came to speak to our employees, and particularly the newsroom, somebody asked him, well, why did you buy us? And, and he gave a great answer, I thought. He said that he had three gates he had to get through. He said the first was, is what you do important? And he said that was an easy gate. I, I know what the Washington Post does is important. The second gate was harder. He said, the second gate was, am I optimistic about the future of the Washington Post? Not newspapers broadly, but the Washington Post. And he said, you know what, I am optimistic. He said, I'm optimistic by nature. But he also said, I'm also optimistic about the future of the Post. And he said, he said to the group of like 600 people from the newsroom, he said, if I weren't optimistic, I'd feel sorry for you guys, but I wouldn't want to join you. They like that. Um, and the third gate was pretty easy, from our perspective at least. The third gate was, could he bring anything to the table? Could he add value? And we could have answered that for him, but he decided on his own that yes, he could bring something to the table and help us make this transition.